Hey internet, Eric here. Um, continuing on from my previous video, Summer of the Monkeys. Um, <laughs> I'm still kind of in that schlocky mood, I guess you would say, from uh, Sharks and Schlock that I did with Patrick. And as I mentioned in that previous video, I'm um, just getting requests out of the way. And not just requests or necessarily just, hey, you gotta see this movie. Um, it's something that's been mentioned in a podcast numerous times. Um, and if you've seen the title of this video, uh, you know that I am discussing Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I discuss plot spoilers, specific scenes, what have you. Came out in 1978, a little bit of backstory. This was actually a request that's, I, oh God, four, five years in the making. I don't know, you'll have to ask her for my friend, Melissa. Um, uh... How did I meet Melissa? I met Melissa a handful of years ago. Uh, we connected on social media and um, stuff was going on and we became friends and we would message each other all the time. And she eventually saw my video review or discussion on the Star Wars holiday special. And she watched that video of mine and she loved it and there's now like an ongoing i guess you would say gimmick or whatever between the two of us you know we're always talking about how bad that 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 show was with lumpy and chewbacca and the rest of that fucking wookie family and eventually there's now an ongoing joke that one time i was very drunk and she took uh, she took advantage of me uh not in that type of way um but she knew i was inebriated inebriated and she said hey you gotta watch this movie starring this person who uh he's like Voldemort he's the name that will not be mentioned the video is out there it's in my playlist look for it I'm not saying it good luck all that jazz and it was one of the worst movies I've ever discussed on my channel she knows exactly what I'm talking about starring Mr. Almondhead. and since then we were she she said hey you gotta watch Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park and um I was at the process of moving at that time, and we kind of went our separate ways for a long time. We reconnected. We re the friendship is back, and I finally found my burned copy that uh, a mutual uh, from Twitter gave to me. And uh, I finally pulled the trigger and uh, bit the bullet, <laughs> and I'm here to talk about Kiss Me to the Phantom of the Park. So thank you. I thank Melissa. That out of the way. The basic plot of this is we're at an amusement park. Kiss is there to perform a concert. And there is a scientist, robotics expert, something like that. He's creating all the robots for the park, you know, that stand and just perform, you know, move like this type of bullshit. And uh, I guess his funding is cut or something like that. So he thinks he's going to get revenge by making robot doubles of Kiss and having them play a bad concert and he takes them hostage. And there's a lot more to it than that. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. I'm not a huge, huge Kiss fan. I was never a part of the Kiss Army. I don't have any of their albums except for maybe a Greatest Hits. Um, I have a couple of singles from them, you know, outside of that Greatest Hits, like... Uh, what was, uh, what is, War Machine, that's one of my favorite Kiss songs, I have the Greatest Hits album, I have a copy of Beth, you know, stuff like that, so, I mean, and I couldn't tell you any names of the albums other than, like, Destroyer and Psycho Circus, so I am not a huge Kiss fan, going into this, oh my god, okay, I'll say this, the acting from everybody's atrocious, <laughs> Um, I, I let it slide from Kiss because they are musicians. They are not actors. When it comes to acting, they are decent musicians. I'll say that. Um, the dialogue is awful. First of all, let's, let's, let's get to the non-Kiss characters. We are following a woman named Melissa. And her boyfriend works at the park, works for the scientist. His name is Mr. Devereaux. And he gets kidnapped somehow. And he gets some type of device implanted on his neck. And he becomes very robotic. And she is looking to try to rescue her, rescue him. She finds Kiss, and Kiss wants to, you know, help her save him um, with their mystical powers. I, I don't get it. So she's okay. 
her boyfriend's awful. Mr. Devereaux is okay. He knows what he's in. So he's kind of a decent, you know, I'm going to say Scooby-Doo villain. And that makes sense because this was a, uh, executive produced by Joseph Barbera from Hanna-Barbera. So when I saw that, I, I knew I was in for something. So um, the acting is pretty atrocious. Uh, Gene Simmons sucks. For some reason, they put a lot of, they, they, they warble his voice. Because I don't know, I don't know, like, the gimmick of Kiss. I know they're, you know, uh, Gene's the de demon, uh, Peter Chris is the cat, uh, Ace is the spaceman, and then you have, um, what's his name? Paul Stanley, he's a star child. I don't know if they're aliens, because when, um, I guess, again, they have superpowers for some reason, and they, ha they have, like, in their command center... I guess um, they have like little relics. You know, one is a, a monster for the demon, like a dragon. One that's a lightning bolt for Star Child. One's a cat, and and and, and so on, and all that bullshit. Um, that gives them powers. Like Gene can breathe fire. Uh, Paul Stanley can shoot laser beams out of his eyes. Uh, Ace can help them teleport by snapping his fingers, and Peter Chris just takes up space. I guess. Um, it's so fucking stupid. But I get that this is like a campy Roger Corman 1966 Batman movie. Um, it, it, it's so funny and it, it's so bad. I, I looked on Wikipedia and it said that this was a budget of $3 million. And I think Gene pocketed 2.5 and the leftover 0.5 like went to basically half of that went to renting the amusement park and the rest went up. Ace's nose. Um, there, there are fight scenes between um, Kiss and the other robots, and fight scenes is in, core, in, in quotation marks. There, there, there's a scene where they are. Well, first off, they want to go find Devereaux, and they said we have to find and stop Devereaux. So they decide to take a break and sit on the carousel, and Devereaux turns on the carousel, spins it around and around and around and around. You know, lots of padding in this movie. Lots of scenes of people on the uh, I guess you would say the roller coasters and Splash Mountain, whatever the fuck. You know, this was at Magic Waters, I guess. Um, and when they finally get off the uh, carousel, they go by the roller coaster, and they're met with some robotic werewolves. Now, first off, here's the thing. The Devereaux, he, he, he's created all these robots. You know what I mean? He's, he... He, there, there's a scene where there's some bikers or some punk kids. They're, they're, they're fucking around with one of his, I guess, one of his creations, which is like a gorilla. And he said, that gorilla cost me, you know, made me, you know, I worked six months and it cost me $300,000. Motherfucker, it's a, it's, it's a man in a, in a monkey suit. Awful. Um, but uh, Kiss is fighting these robotic werewolves and they're climbing up the sides of the roller coaster cage, I guess you would say, uh, like fucking Spider-Man. Kiss shows up, they jump down, and it's some of the worst fight choreography that you've ever seen. And, of course, like I said, it's it's Kiss. They, they don't know what they're doing. You know what I mean? So, you know, Ace is doing spin kicks that don't hit the werewolves, even though the werewolves fly around. Gene, because he's the demon, he's lifting them up like the fucking Ultimate Warrior and press slamming them. Um, they're doing backflips, and they're punching, and, like, lightning bolts are coming out when they hit them. Sparks. So, it's, again, 66 Batman. I'm waiting for, like... Paul Stanley to punch one of the werewolves in the face and it goes bop, you know what I mean? With a fucking, you know, air balloon or word balloon. Um, and then I, I, I had to send this to Melissa while I was watching this because I was doing kind of a commentary with her. Um, I don't get it. There was a, there's a couple scenes where you can tell, like, you know, it's not Ace Freely doing the fucking, you know, backflips and, you know, jumps off the trampoline, you know, to make it look like he's jumping 10 feet in the air. But the fact is that his stunt double was a black man. And you can tell because, it, you, I mean, you can tell, you know, it, it's smart. Just paint the stunt doubles up, you know, with the kiss makeup. But the person who doubled for Ace Freely, his neck is black, like his skin. So it's a black man doubling for a white guy. Maybe they thought it was so fast you couldn't notice. Trust me, it's noticeable. Um... This is right out of, like, a Roger Corman space thing. Because they have... Because when Devereaux finds... No, first, Devereaux sends in Melissa's boyfriend. You know, he's being controlled to find their space rocks or space... I don't know, the, the, the little icon things. 
and he zaps them with a ray gun that looks like it's right out of Roger Corman. And I'm talking like Star Crash, Roger Corman shit. Or where's the other one? Here we go. Forbidden World. You know, that's what this is. And then, of course, Devereaux uses it later to try to destroy those little trinkets. Uh, eventually, the uh, kiss is captured. I don't remember how because I wasn't fucking paying attention because of this movie. They're put into this cage. It looks like a giant bird cage with laser uh, bars and an occasional lightning bolt that'll zap. Um, again, $3 million, and it looks like they spent 50 cents. And there's there and um there's scenes why where, where they're talking because I guess there's there's a scene where Gene Simmons robot attacks the police and then Gene almost gets arrested. Well, cut now to the scene where they're in the birdcage, and Paul or Peter looks at at Gene and he says, "Well, that's probably why the police thought you caused you know the destruction." And Gene looks at him and growls like a lion. Well, no fucking shit, Peter. This is why. Put two and two together. Um. Eventually, these bad robots go on stage and perform this awful version of a KISS concert. And, like, even the crowd is booing. Um, KISS uses telepathy to make, like, that, that box of their trinkets float to them. They open it up. And then they start, they literally, they fly in like fucking Superman. Like, you know, on strings. You know, thank God they were smart to make it at nighttime with the stars so you can edit out the strings. And they, they do, you know, they, they, they badly fight, you know, with choreography, fight the evil robots. Black Stun Double shows up again. Um, and Ace somehow just zaps them and makes them disappear. And then suddenly they're, they're, they get their uh, instruments back and they say, hey, are you ready to rock? I say no. I, and, you know, they play a great concert. Um This movie is awful. But I'll say this. It serves a purpose. This is a movie like Samurai Cop. This is a movie uh, that you want to put in that is so bad it's good. And it's not good. But it's it's one of those, put it in, have a few beers, have some pizza, invite some friends over, and watch some stupid shit. You know what I mean? This is like... Forbidden World. This is like, you know, I, I, I don't know if this is a great comparison, but it's like, it's something stupid like Water World, okay? Um, Big Money Rustlers, you know, it has its purpose. It, it's schlock, it's dumb, but it's never boring. Um, another thing, Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park and they're all robots, you know, bless her heart. Melissa tried to explain that to me through text, and uh, it wasn't working. Um, let's just say this review here might not be worth the four years that you waited, Melissa. But I will say this. This it was not a, well, it might have been a waste of time. Um, but I'll say this. It's not worth all the hate. I, I understand that Kiss, uh, they don't ever, ever, ever want to talk about this movie. I don't know why. It's dumb. It's a product of its time. Um, I'm not saying be proud of it, but you don't have to be embarrassed by it because a lot of actors started with stupid shit. Jennifer Aniston was in the first Leprechaun movie. Okay. Um, anything good I could see about it. I mean, it had a great soundtrack. It was Kiss. And they, they did sing uh, my favorite Chris, Kiss song, which is uh, Beth. Um, yeah. If I rank these, this is definitely the best of the three movies that I am connected with Melissa for. Then would come Lumpy and the Star Wars Holiday Special. And then would come That Will Not Be Named. Um, so, I don't regret watching it. I'm not going to block Melissa from my phone. But I'm going to be like, whew. This was a movie. So, that's it. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. I know this has a cult following. Are you a fan of this? Comment below. Tell me what you think. Um, like, subscribe, click the bell, all that shit. Um, I'm going to put Melissa's Instagram in the uh, in the description below because uh, she's really taking off on Instagram as a as a 
Animal Sitter. I love a lot of her daily updates. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot um, very relatable. They're very real. She doesn't edit out mistakes that she makes, like dropping the phone and saying the wrong words. It's a lot of fun. Um, I look forward to them all the time. I still look forward to them after seeing this. Um, friendship is still there. <sighs> but we got some talking to do later. Um, all that jazz. It's late. I'm six beers down. <sighs> Cheers. Fuck. Where's the phantoms?